All right, AMP1 students, in this video we are going to start to discussing the integumentary system. And so this is chapter six in our textbook. So I'm going to go to our learning objectives so you can see what would be responsible for knowing. Um, so the first one is to identify the skin structures. Um, so we do have a little bit of um, anatomy uh, that we're going to be responsible for in lecture. Um, so we want you to be able to look at a section of the skin and identify the various um, layers of the skin as well as the accessory structures that are in the skin too. So, so this has a list of the layers and structures that you'll need to be able to identify um, on an image and the image is um, figure 6.1 in your textbook. So that's what I'm going to go back to here. All right, so and I might see if I can make this a little smaller so you can see the whole thing. Maybe one more time. There we go. So this is from our textbook. Um, so this is a section of skin. So they just took a full thickness section of the skin. And so we're able to see not only the surface of the skin, which is usually what we can see, um, but we can also see the layers and the structures that are in the skin from two different angles. But I think most of the structures we'll be looking at are in this, this part of the, the image. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is to identify the layers. And so those are listed um, over here. Um, realize that the uh, integument, that's the other name for skin, is... It has two main layers, the epidermis and the dermis. So those are our two main layers of the, of the skin. So there is a subcutaneous layer. Sometimes they'll call it the hypodermis because it's below the dermis. Um, but that's not technically part of the skin. So it's more of a connective tissue that is connecting the skin to underlying deeper structures like muscle down here. So... All right, but the skin has two layers, epidermis and dermis. So the epidermis, you will see, this is the bottom, the most superficial layer, and you can kind of see that it does go around, depending on if we have structures that are associated with the epidermis. Um, but, but that is the bottom of the epidermis, and then we have all these cells that are, that are part of the epidermis that go up to the surface of the skin. So that's the epidermis, and hopefully you'll remember this was from our, make that bigger, this was from lab. Um, we've already looked at the epidermis and part of the dermis um, when we were in lab, lab three on tissues. We described this tissue as stratified squamous epithelium, so we were looking at the, this part here is all epidermis, so the darker, kind of the darker pink in this picture, and then this is dermis this more lighter pink tissue down here. So, so just as a reminder, that's, we're kind of in lecture going to dive a little bit deeper into the anatomy of the, of the integument or skin and talk about it in more detail. So, okay, so I'll go back to our picture. Okay, so that is our epidermis and then the dermis, and you can kind of use these little brackets over here to, to see. Um, so the dermis is all this area here. And you can see quite a few structures in that area. So you do have veins, which they usually represent as blue. And then you do have arteries, which they represent as red. So we got some blood vessels in there. Um, plus we have these other structures. There's one here, this structure, that structure is a muscle. Um, so these structures, these structures. So, so you're going to be able to identify what those what those structures are. And they do break the dermis down into papillary and reticular layers, but I don't ask questions pertaining to those. That's a little bit more specific than I think we need to go. So, so it's just as long as you can identify this part of the skin or integument as dermis, and then this part up here is the epidermis. That will be sufficient. Um, so I forgot to mention at the beginning, um, this chapter six, we are moving on to talking about body systems. So, so far we've just been talking about the more simple um, 
organizational levels of the human body. So we did like the chemical molecular level where we talked about atoms and ions, various molecules. And then we moved on to cells where we talked about the um, functions and parts of the cells. And then we talked about tissues in lab. We didn't talk about them in lecture. So we talked about them in lab. So now we're on to body systems. And remember the body systems are made up of various organs. Um, so in this case, the integumentary system, it's, its organ is this here, the skin. So the skin is an organ. And it will have, because it's an organ, remember that means that it has two, at least um, two or more tissues that compose it. So that's the definition of an organ. Um, so you will see epithelial tissue. So that's one of our primary tissue types. You will see connective tissue. We haven't talked about this, but the dermis here, all that kind of lighter pink is areolar connective tissue, which we learned about in lab. So, um, and then we have some dense irregular connective tissue in there too. So, so there's connective tissue. And then we have muscle in the integument. So that's muscle here. And then nervous is the last primary tissue type that we talked about. So we do have like a lot of nervous tissue that's associated. So you can kind of see they usually represent it as yellow. So, so that's the nervous, nervous tissue that we're seeing. So skin is definitely an organ because it has all four primary tissue types, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue. And it is the largest organ um, that we have in our body, too. All right, so back to our anatomy. So we learned the two layers of the integumentary system. So epidermis and dermis, sorry, epidermis and then dermis. And then I will mention now, because this, this is talked about, this layer is so closely associated with the skin that we talk about it when we talk about the integumentary system, even though that's not technically a part of the, the skin. Um, so this area down here is called, you, again, you can call it hypodermis or subcutaneous layer. So sub just means below and cutaneous refers to the skin. So we'll, we'll use that term too. So subcutaneous layer or hypodermis. And you'll notice, hopefully, all these little yellow blobs that you see in here, that's representing the adipose tissue. So the subcutaneous layer has quite a bit of adipose tissue associated with it. Um, and then we do have some more areolar connective tissue like we had up here in the dermis. So, so it's kind of the two primary tissue types. And you can see the blood vessels. We get the veins and the arteries in that tissue as well. So yeah, in that layer as well. So the subcutaneous or hypodermis layer. All right, so now those are our layers that we should be familiar with. So now we're going to talk about the various um, accessory structures, that they call it, that are associated with the skin. So if we go back to our learning objectives, so we talked about epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. Um, so next we'll identify sweat glands, and then we'll look at the, the structures that you need to know that are associated with the hairs. So let me go to our picture again and show you the sweat glands. So the sweat glands, they show, it looks like two of them. So this is probably the, well, maybe three. That's probably the best one. So that is a sweat gland. Um, and then you'll notice that it has a duct that runs. So, and realize it's in the dermis. That's where the sweat gland is. That's where the sweat is produced. And then that sweat will travel up this duct all the way to the surface of the skin and then there's like a little pore there where it will um, leave and go out onto the surface of the skin and then hopefully evaporate that's kind of the purpose of the sweat is that it evaporates and turns in from a liquid to a gas and then takes a lot of heat with it so so those guys help with our body temperature regulation so there's one there um, i think probably this is one just, but you can only really see the, the duct part. Here's the sweat gland. That looks like a sweat gland and maybe another duct here, but it's kind of um, the, we're looking at different planes of these sweat glands. So, so we don't always see the whole, whole sweat gland, but you can definitely hear. 
So those are our sweat glands, and later on in objectives we'll learn a little bit more about the different types of sweat glands and where they're located um, as far as in the skin organ. So we don't have sweat glands in every, every area of the body. So. All right, and then our hair follicle, hair root, and hair shaft are the next structures. So um, they call this the hair follicle. So again, it's down in the dermis. So this is our hair follicle. That's going to be where our um, hair cells are formed. Um, and then this part is our hair. And since it's still under the skin, it's within the skin, um, they call this the hair root. So, oops. so that all the way up there is a hair root. And let me see if they have, I don't know if they... In this picture, they, it doesn't look like they actually identified hair root, but just realize this is the hair root, the part that's um, within the two layers, the dermis and the epidermis of the skin. And then once the hair exits the skin and then kind of protrudes off the surface, um, then we call these the hair shafts. So those are all hair shafts up there. So those are the things that you should be familiar with when we're talking about the the hair associated with the skin and be able to identify those individual parts if we point to them. All right, and then let me go back to our objectives and make sure we don't miss any of these. Um, the erector pili muscle um, is the next structure that we'll look at. So that muscle, there's you can see one here. And you can also see one here. Notice that those two muscles, it's actually made up of smooth muscle, um, but those muscles are associated with a hair follicle. So you'll notice that they're attached to the hair follicle, and so is this one. And then they're attached up there by the, the epidermis. So these little um, erector pili muscles, um, if, and they're made of smooth muscle, um, when they contract, um, what they'll do is change the position of the hair shaft and cause the hair shaft to become more erect. So kind of not like angled, but kind of sticking straight up. So, so everybody's familiar with goose bumps. Usually get that when you're cold. That's, um, that's called by the contracting of these erector pili muscles. So, so those work really well in animals because when they change their hair position, they can either, you know, be a sign that they're scared or they're, kind of um, kind of trying to look bigger, you know, because of a predator or something. Um, and also, they, they, it's really good for insulation, too. So they can, you know, have their hairs change position, and that'll help with um, keeping them warm and um, kind of regulating their temperature. So with us, that's not as much of a big deal because we don't have that much hair. So, um, But these guys do a pretty good job of letting us know when we're cold, and also um, they, they do... Uh, kind of sense things too as far as touch touch on there as well so so that's the erector pili or pili kind of I'm not sure exactly everybody kind of pronounces that differently all right so then the next thing we'll talk about is sebaceous glands and then some tactile cells I'm going to show you where those are located so the sebaceous glands kind of just like the erector pili muscles Pili muscles, um, they're associated with a hair follicle as well. So here is a sebaceous gland, and that's a sebaceous gland. It's kind of cut in half, so we're kind of seeing like where this cut those in half, so you can kind of see the cells inside that are producing, producing the sebum. And then you also see a sebaceous gland here. It's not been cut in half, so you're just kind of seeing the outside. So that's a sebaceous gland as well. So we'll talk more about those, but they produce sebum, which is an oily fluid. And we'll talk about their function. And then the next thing is the tactile. Let me move this up just a little bit. The tactile, they're also sometimes called sensory receptors, tactile cells or sensory receptors. But those are those yellow structures. And what they do is if they get compressed, then they'll, send, they'll release a little chemical and send a signal through the nervous system to your spinal cord and brain to tell you, you know, that something landed on you, like maybe a butterfly or, or if somebody, like, you know, hits you on the arm. Um, you would sense that and, and respond to it. So, all right, so that is our anatomy.
for our first objective of the skin. So we'll have pictures of this and you'll have to identify those things. I'll see you in the next video.